A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? On third down, Lindsey. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. He's got a man complete. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. On the jump. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. Brinson, and he's brought down. Now during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Extra point attempt to come here. And that will make this a four-point game. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. 
And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 53 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all. Challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Throwing on first down. Barnett. And it's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. On second down, they'll run it here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he finds a man with a crossing round. Catch number 44 of on the year, it's a first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. Lucas, a good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. On second down, they'll run it here. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. A CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field. But, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field. But also, when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaking up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage, back at the six. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. <laughs> Operating from the gun, Barnett. And it's caught, touchdown! A great play there! His first touchdown on the year. And the Bulls have yet again retaken the lead. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen. And it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay.
The try here for the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. So that one a long 11-play drive. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Throwing again. Lindsey steps away to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Throwing on third and long. Lindsey, and he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. And on now is the punter, standing just outside his own goal line. as a 53-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. Looking to throw on second down. Barnett. His throw incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be fourth down. And they bring their punter out there now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And you figure, Charles, they have enough time here in the first half, more than a minute, to put a drive together, at least get them in position to try a field goal. Yeah, they've got all three timeouts at their disposal, so I'm actually thinking bigger. With those three timeouts, that amount of time on the clock, I'm thinking about trying to get a touchdown and settle for a field goal. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. To throw on second down. Lindsey, he's going to rifle one deep left side. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Chicago. A big play there. His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Blues will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. 
Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Back out comes this offense now, late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. start on the ground here on first down and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down back to throw Barnett and he's going to find his man out of the backfield that's complete and he's going to be taken down at about the 33 Tell you what, Barney, you get the football in his hands, just give him a little bit of open space. As we just saw, he can make you pay. And he wasn't the top option there, but check down, turned into first down, and then some. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and that draws them level. It's 23-23. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee, and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things definitely getting interesting around the NFL as we begin the month of December. So let's get right to it. We'll get started down at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. And it is the Jets who have the lead in the second quarter. The Jets seem to be on their way to what would be a good victory. Another game of interest in the AFC East has us checking in on the Patriots at home in Foxborough. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Houston Texans. Mac Jones, a strong performance there, over 300 yards passing with three touchdowns in the victory. We'll continue on and take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half. And they didn't get a whole lot done in the rushing department in those first two quarters. They probably feel pretty lucky to be tied here at halftime. Meanwhile, for our home team, here's a look at their numbers throwing the football in what was a very even first half. With both of these offenses having their way, it's not likely they'll need to be doing a whole lot at halftime, but the defenses are definitely in need of some adjusting. And for the call of the second half, let's go back out to Brandon and Charles. Yeah, Coach, certainly no shortage of action in those first two quarters. Definitely got to work on my touchdown calls, so we'll see how much voice I have left for the second half here. And the half will begin with a touchback. 
And this offense set to go now to begin the third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Brinson. Room here to run. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Back-to-back go, go. -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Up the middle they go. Brinson. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. 62 yards on the ground for him so far. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive line and creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Now a handoff up the middle. Brinson. Yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Let me do this a little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Come on, come on. Hey. On first down, Brinson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Blues have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored, and now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got 
to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, they've had success getting the ball to him out of the backfield, but this time they had a man right on it. He was able to break that play up before he could get started. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And he finds Parker here, complete. And he's tackled at the 38, but they doubled their yardage. The play started at the 19, and they gained 19. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Looking to throw. Barnett, quick slant to Crowder. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be dropped just shy of the 35 at the 34. A pickup of 17 on a play that originated at the 17. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They'll look to throw again. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled it by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there. Exactly as you described, an interception. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Brinson, and only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. throw on third down. 
Lindsey out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Looking to throw on second down. Lindsey, a uh, quick throw, knocked away, and incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Back to throw. Lindsey, and he can't escape, and down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand. Well, it's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for decent yardage, and obviously they've got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back, but every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. And they'll send out their punter now. Standing right on his own five-yard line. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. As this offense takes the field against CD, remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing to battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in the second half. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he'll push forward to the 37, gain of two. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Go off the bootleg, Barnett. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So nothing doing there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. So they bring out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides, each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. A loss 
loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. Brinson, and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. And right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, Lindsey. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. This is taken at about the 14. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Finding room at midfield. And he's going to get this down inside the 40 before he's finally ridden out of bounds. And a huge play that time. 45 yards. Running their plays over and over during the week and often get robotic for an offense. But on game day, they can often flow smoothly, as that one just did. chain mover. They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And over the middle, this is Parker. And able to get this to the 24-yard line. They began the play at the 12. It's also a pickup of 12 for the first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And this time, they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Oftentimes, when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Looking to throw. Barnett on the catch. It's Crowder. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. play so we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close this is the national football league on ea sports back now just east of manhattan in brooklyn as we are just about set to go here in quarter number four the drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown here's first and ten now a handoff running through the middle the broken tackle could not free him as he's brought down at the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Now 
second and nine from the 10. There they'll keep leaning on the running game, back to the ground. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Back to throw, Barnett. Seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Bulls are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. But we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth-quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Kick the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drives seven plays in length. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Takes it at the seventh. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. They no longer have the lead after that last touchdown, all tied up in the fourth quarter. And a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. First and ten, Lindsey, he's going to rifle one deep left side. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and ten. Up the middle they go. Brinson, he is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. The offense on third down, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and eight. Operating from the gun, Lindsey. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That gain on third down, good for 28. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Now a handoff up the middle. Brinson. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Brinson, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. They had three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw it for a loss. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession hey. is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Hey. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he's not gonna get there. Might have even lost a yard. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And as a result, possession switches hands. 
Boy, an incredibly aggressive move to go for it there. Game tied fourth quarter. You got to be surprised. I am, and I know that we're in a new era of football where we look at the analytics sometimes, and a lot of times the analytics tell you to go for it, right? But do the analytics take into account game situation, where we are, all those things? In this situation, I thought it was an incredibly aggressive play. It didn't work out, and again, tie game fourth quarter makes this thing a little bit more interesting. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Oh, he'll field it in the end zone. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Chicago offense set to get started. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. First down, Lindsey. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone and throw it to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. They'll run on first down. Brinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 105 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They'll keep it on the ground. Brinson. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. from the gun, Johnson. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Now on the 
heels of that run by Johnson. Here's another first and ten. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. The last run got nine. That leaves them with second and a yard. Hey. Up the middle they go. Brinson, and on this one he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Now a handoff up the middle. Brinson, and he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. They give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. middle they go. Brinson. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him four on the carry and it'll make this a third and about two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. Keep it on the ground. Brinson. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. A great effort there. With touchdown number 20 on the year. And the Blues have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The situation for them offensively as follows. Down on the scoreboard. Just under two minutes to go. A possible crippling loss to their playoff status in the ballots barring a late score. Start the drive there, 18 yards. They got exactly what they wanted there. Out, round, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle. An out route? That's not the way you're supposed to play it. Oh! 
One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Back to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Eluding the pressure right. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And oh, it's incomplete. Oh, that would have been six points, but somehow he couldn't rein it in. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, I've, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you're focused just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. On first down, Brinson. Well, they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Okay, ready. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. Brinson, and he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it, and it's second down. Now a handoff up the middle. Brinson, and not much running room. Down to the 32. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. On third down, Brinson. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Fourth down, they'll try and run for it. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. It's a gain of three there, and that should be just about all she wrote. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. So this crowd will not go home happy. It's a victory for our visitors. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them that this one is now planted. So for our visitors, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to eight and four. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the home team here, this loss cost them in the playoff chase as they fall back to 7-5 and five on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week.